old are you? Ten years old. What do you think Kamloops would be like if we didn't have water treatment? Well, everyone would get sick if they just drank the water out of the tap. And Kamloops would be more like a country like Uganda where they can't afford to clean, to clean their water. When officially opened in February of 2005, it was one of the largest and most sophisticated facilities of its kind, not just in British Columbia or even in Canada, but in all of North America. It's the Kamloops Center for Water Quality. Using leading edge technology, the plant is capable of producing 160 million liters of drinking water a day. It's water quality that far exceeds Canada's health regulations. Not only is the plant producing clean, safe drinking water for a growing population, it is also positioning the city of Kamloops as a leader in environmental stewardship and water conservation. When it comes to water treatment plants, you could say Kamloops has arrived in style. Peter Coxon is Senior Project Engineer with Urban Systems. It's been a fantastic opportunity to be part of creating something uh, that is so innovative and leading edge. The team that was put together on this project, including the city engineering staff, our public works staff, and our consulting team of Urban Systems Limited and Stantec Consulting, have put together a project which I will believe will be the most sustainable water treatment plant in North America, if not the world. What we've created here in Kamloops, British Columbia is just phenomenal. Making the leap from a city with some of the poorest water quality around to one that can boast exceptional water standards, cutting edge technology and extraordinary environmental features didn't happen overnight. The story begins some years ago. Early in the 1990s, the South Thompson River water quality had deteriorated significantly. Because of natural and human activities within the watershed, the community started seeing higher and higher turbidity levels, or particles in the water. Eventually, health officials began testing for and finding disease-causing organisms like Cryptosporidium and Giardia. Ernie Kurtz was the city's director of engineering and public works at the time. We really started working on the um, water quality issues in the city back in 1991. We recognized that there was a need at that point in time to develop a water supply that was safer and that was uh, readily expandable for the population of Kamloops as it grew. It was in 1991 that the city retained urban systems to conduct a thorough drinking water supply and demand study. John Dumbrell, urban systems managing partner, took a lead role in the project. The study examined several water source options. The South Thompson River was chosen as the main supply with the North Thompson River as a backup supply. The study also recommended that the city increase its water system capacity investigate various water treatment options, and to encourage a citywide water conservation program. In 2002, the city of Kamloops announced plans to build a new water treatment plant. It would be the first facility of its size in North America to apply innovative membrane technology. Mike Warren, city of Kamloops utilities engineer, was involved in selecting the technology to be used in the new treatment plant. It was a long process to get from the concept of uh, the conventional slow sand filtration technology through to the emerging membrane technology and there was a lot of science involved in that uh, and the, the pilot testing was very critical to the success of the project. Lisa Clark, Urban Systems Project Manager, coordinated the field work for the pilot studies. She tested many membrane treatment plants set up near the city's main water intake site. Membrane technology had traditionally not been used in the past because it was too expensive to consider, but by 2001, the cost had come down and the technology had improved, so we decided to complete a pilot study to compare conventional filtration with membrane filtration. And uh, the results of the pilot study were very good. All of the filters provided excellent quality drinking water. So how does the technology work? These are the ultra-filtration membranes. As you can see, they look a lot like strands of spaghetti. What you can't see is that they're covered with millions of microscopic holes which filter out the dirt. The fibers are organized into large cassettes and are submerged into open tanks of water. Vacuum pressure is used to draw water from the outside of the membrane into the inside. The pores in these fibers are generally 0.1 micron size. They're, they're very, very small and particles will not go through them. The pathogens like Giardium crypto which are in the two to five micron size, clearly will not go through a 0.1 micron pore. At the Kamloops Center for Water Quality, there are more than 16 million membrane strands. Together, they create a total fiber area of 194,000 square meters, equivalent to 36 football fields. 
the membranes are producing up to 160 million liters of the highest quality drinking water per day. The technology is impressive enough, but the project team wasn't finished yet. Another impressive feature about this water treatment plant is the amount of recovery that takes place. Normally a water treatment plant will operate around 90% recovery. That means for every 100 litres taken from the environment to the river, that 10 litres is actually sent back. At the Kamloops facility, less than 1% of the water is rejected, and even that water is of better quality that was brought into the plant because all of the solids are removed. Chris Town, environmental engineer with Urban Systems, designed the equipment that removes the solids. While the reject water comes into a separate tank, where the solids are separated and then floated to the surface and then they're skimmed off and then uh, after they're skimmed off they're sent to the centrifuge where uh, like your, the spin cycle in your washing machine the particles are separated to the outside and then uh, drop down into a, a bin where they can be trucked away. The minimal amount of water that is rejected from the plant eventually makes its way to a wetland, which Urban Systems senior architect Tony Bradwell designed to replicate the thousands of pothole lakes surrounding Kamloops. From the wetland, the non-treated water is used to irrigate vegetation on site and will eventually be used to irrigate Kamloops waterfront parks, rather than ending up in the city's sewer system. The initial concept for the plant landscaping was to show the connection between the river and the treatment plant. Um, the emphasis is on the relationship we have with the, with the river and it's not a one-way relationship. Uh, we certainly we take water from the river for the treatment process and for our use, but we have a responsibility to give something back. What we're doing in the landscape development is demonstrating the, um, the efforts that have been made to minimize the treatment process, to conserve water in the landscaping and to provide an educational opportunity for people about water conservation and, and the river landscape. A section of the roof at the facility has also been designed as a green roof to demonstrate energy conservation. Instead of black tar and shingles, you'll find grasses, shrubs and flowers growing atop a section of the roof visible from the second floor of the building. Over 50% of the site is covered with vegetation, plants native to the Kamloops region that will thrive in its semi-arid climate. Often in urban development we have a lot of asphalt and black roofs that generate heat and have been shown to contribute to global warming. The increased vegetation at the water treatment plant, the green roof, will decrease that heat island effect. The environmental and water conservation features designed into the Kamloops Center for Water Quality are causing a lot of people to take notice. In fact, the facility is on track to become the only water treatment plant in Canada to receive a prestigious Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design certification at the silver level. The environmental features designed into this building are leading the way it's a progressive design and the commitment that the City of Kamloops and their design team have shown towards making this a green project is truly impressive. I believe this is an excellent example for other municipalities to follow. And now we're happy to say that 10 years later the water treatment plant is running well and continues to provide safe water for the community. The Kamloops Center for Water Quality was the first water treatment facility in Canada to receive LEED Gold Level certification. It is amazing to see the difference that the wetland and environmentally sustainable features have made to what was once a vacant industrial site. Looking back, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years since the water treatment plant was commissioned. It's. Uh, it's just an amazing project and I'm really proud and uh, thankful that I was able to be involved and I think all of the project team members feel the same way. It's, uh, it's really special to get to be involved in a legacy project like this and to know that you were a part of providing safe drinking water for your community. So thank you very much. <laughs>